I am Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome to the Underground Laboratory where we create robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity from time to time. Well, actually all the time, at least for the past 40 days, 39 days. Today's day 40, but I'm getting ahead of myself. But for all that time we've been working on comics, this is the comic we're working on. Not, not necessarily this issue because this issue's done. We're working on issue four. This is issue three, but this is available as well as two and three at CircWorks.com. It's Young and the Dead. It's Kids vs. Zombies. It's a lot of fun. It takes place in the 80s if you're a fan of Goonies, Monster Squad, or more currently if you like, like Stranger Things, you'll probably dig this as well. But that's the comic book I'm working on. And like I said, we are day 40, so we're going to write that down just so we don't lose track. Let's see, day 40, we got the big Sharpie, the big pad. Day 40 of what? Day 40 of 100 days of making comics. That This is the 100 days of making comics challenge. That's what we're doing right now. And it is where you spend at least 30 minutes a day, every day working on your own personal comic book project. This was started by Kevin Cross. He's done it about four times already. Um, some people have done it multiple times. This is my second round. So I did it for issue three and now I'm doing it for issue four. And uh, we're 40 days in and it's coming along slowly or surely, but it's, uh, things are hopefully progressing and uh, having some fun with it. So anyway, but I wanted to talk to you about, and this is something we've talked about before. Before we go to the actual process, before we go up here to the paralleloscope, which allows us to build, uh, allows us to view alternate realities, uh, and to see what's going on with the process of the comic book, I wanted to talk about references, and we've we've talked a little bit about this on the on the on the show before. If you, I guess this is a show, yeah. So we've talked a little bit about it before, and uh, you know, obviously, like Pinterest is a good place. Google, you can do all that stuff. That's great, but um, I want to key you in on another reference that I use quite a bit, and because a lot of times. It's easy to search things and find what you're looking for, but what if there's something that you don't know what it's called? You know kind of what it is or it's part of something, but you don't know what it's called, so how do you search that? Um, and that's when I come to these things, these visual dictionaries. And some of these are available online, but the online versions aren't as good as the book versions because as you will see, here, here's one. This one is all done in photographs. This one is the uh, DK Ultimate Visual Dictionary. Um, and you can see, here's a picture of a bike. All the different little parts that will tell you what they all look like. And also the, the thing I like about these is this is like, if you boil these items down to their essence, like for instance, a bike or a wheelbarrow or an alarm clock or whatever, what kind of, what, what is the basic, because a lot of times we when we draw, uh, we want people to recognize what we're doing and say if you, you know, if you're doing something that's had different incarnations and maybe more modern versions or, you know, not as recognizable or whatever. This this will have, like if on the back it's got a helicopter. So it, would, it boils everything down to the basics. So a basic helicopter is what you're gonna get here. And a lot of times that's what you want. You, you may look at a lot of things and oh, this is really cool, but I, I want something a little, you know, what the first thing people think of when they when they think of one of these things but these things are great now this one is all done in photographs there's old cars motorcycles um castles and it tells you all the different things like if you look at the castle with you know it'll tell you all the different what all the things are in the castle this one's pretty cool my favorite is this one and as you can see i use this a lot it's falling apart this is the mcmillan visual dictionary and the reason why i like this one is this one is all done in illustrations it's all like illustrator like vector uh so a city and it tells you what all these different things are uh let's see uh, like what's inside uh, like a it looks i don't know if that's all in like electrical box um different styles of clothing and what they're all called um but sometimes that stuff's not as easy to search online different boats different vehicles uh you know, sports, different sporting equipment, all that stuff is in here. So these are two uh, really cool uh, items for references. 
they're not, not very portable, so you can't really take them around. That's the good thing about Google and those. But but like I said, sometimes Google, you know, it, sometimes these things work a little better. So maybe something you want to think about. You can probably pick up some used versions or maybe even find some in like Goodwill or something. This this looks like something, I don't even know if this is, <laughs> this might not, Goodwill might not even take this thing, but, but it's seen a lot of use for me. But anyway, so that's that. Check out some visual dictionaries if you want some uh, different different ideas for references and everything. But now we're going to, like I said, we're going to go up here to the parallelescope and see the progress of, uh, or the process rather, of, of uh, Young and the Dead. So. So as I feared, the printer problems uh, persist, and I have no, my printer will not print blue. And I ran the, the cleaner, you know, I went online to figure out what to do. I ran the cleaner a number of times. Uh, well, first what I did was, because I, I showed you these, these cartridges that I get for a super good deal online. So I thought maybe that was the case. Maybe the printer was just being picky and it, wa it only wanted the actual, the actual colors so I went and got you know the ones that are meant for it anyway the brother brand so I went and got those and didn't make any difference so I ran the the printer what do you call it cleaner or whatever it says you run it up to five times so I did that these are all my little test things and as you can see there's some magenta there's some yellow there's some black but no cyan so uh, these are all my tests so that didn't work out so then I figured I'd try to be clever and switch out my, because really the, the, the main color I need is blue because that's, I'm pr trying to print blue line. So I switched out the magenta with the blue and I thought, well, maybe it'll just, it'll just think that it's magenta and it will print it from there um, in the magenta slot. And that didn't work. And I don't, I'm guessing because it probably has some something in like a reservoir or somewhere in the printer, it's still loaded with some magenta because it still came out magenta. So maybe if I kept it in there and kept running it, but you know, I just got so tired of trying to deal with it. So I decided uh, just to go into Photoshop and then change all my blue lines to magenta, print it out in like, or, or red, print it out in red. Um, for doing this kind of stuff, I mean, I can, I can still go in and I can go into Photoshop into channels and I can get rid of the red. But if you scan, if, like if you're scanning in, the thing is like uh, Xerox machines, photocopiers, and and as far as the line art setting on your printer, they re it reads red. If it's dark enough, it'll read it as black. Whereas blue, or you know, light blue or whatever, it's just invisible. So that's why a lot of people do blue lines. So I, you know, I can go in, but I, I don't know, I like working off of blue lines. I mean, when I do my sketches, I'll do it in red pencil and everything, and that's fine too. But, but anyway, so then I went to print it out, and um, the Canson Bristol that I bought, which I do like, but I guess it's too thick because it wouldn't go through my printer. Um, and I don't, I, I, I don't know, I guess it seems a little thicker. Um, but I've stuff I've printed out stuff, you know, on regular Bristol before and no problem with it going through my printer. So this Canson paper is not going to work for that. Um, it's still great paper and I can use it for illustrations and everything. So no big loss there. Um, so I happen to have, um, I still had some of the Canson pre-lined, uh, pre-ruled paper, comic book paper. Uh, let's see. So I don't know if you can see this. Probably not. It, believe me, it's it's pre-ruled. It's really light. Um, so I was able to run that through, and uh, and that works. So this is what I ended up with. Can you see that? So yeah, it's 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 on uh, it's it's on the the Bristol the lighter stuff, the lighter cans and stuff, the pre-rolled stuff, um, but it's in red. So anyway, and before my concern was that because Manga Studio already has everything pre-rolled, but I guess that doesn't print out. There might be a setting where you can do that. Um, so it, it's not like it's got way more rules 
uh, you know, lines, guides, or whatever you want to call them on there. Um, it just printed out and uh, it looks fine, so it'll work. So I'm going to go ahead and start inking this thing. Okay, that will do it for another day. Day 40 is done, so we pull it off the big pad, we crumple it up. Is it crumple or crumble? I think it could be either one. I've heard it both. I'm gonna say crumple. I usually say crumble, but I say crumple. Crumple today. We're crumpling this up, we're throwing it in the trash, and I'll see you tomorrow for day 41. That is all. Hey everyone, you've seen the process. Now you can check out the story. Issues one through three of Young and the Dead are available at my website at circworks.com. Also follow me on social media at the links listed below. Subscribe and check out some of the other videos in the series. There's much more to come.